I've got some adorable primitive decor to show you, but stick to the end and see why this building is such a big deal to me. Welcome my crafty loving friends to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today I have this redo from my booth. I fixed it up, put a plant in it, and I sold the plant and did not sell this little cloche, I'm going to call it. Um, I had taken, it had an open top on it, and I had taken this knob and popped it down inside, and I thought it looked really cute. But when I went to uh, just kind of dust things and move them around, I noticed the knob was loose. So I brought it home to just uh, fix the knob and put another little fake plant in it and put it back down there and decided when I got it home that I was going to do something different. So I grabbed some Spanish moss and made a little kind of a, a nest inside and some of these pit berries. I made a little ring out of them and set them down inside on top of the Spanish moss. Now I had this hen or rooster for, I guess it's a rooster, for quite a while. I got this from Dollar General back in the spring, I believe, um, for just a dollar. I pick them up every once in a while because I like to use them as toppers. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. It's not going to match really with the way that it's painted and I want it more of a primitive look. So I just took some black Waverly ink paint and I am painting it up black. I'm going to set that aside to dry. I just did one coat on that little rooster. I now I'm going to grubby up a candle. So this is just a little battery candle. I get these from Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description. This one is a votive and I'm taking some Mod Podge in a separate little container and I am painting it basically onto this little battery candle. I go all the way around and I even do inside there in the top and I even do a little bit on the candle part, uh, the little tip. I don't do it fully. Sometimes I do. It all depends on how much I can get uh, it on around my fingers and stuff, but sometimes I'll set it down and do it. But now I'm going to take my grubby mix. I have a video on how to how I make this, but it's cinnamon, cloves, uh instant coffee, pumpkin spice. It's all the little yummy smelling um, spices that you can buy at Dollar Tree. And I just bought this container for, per a suggestion uh, from one of my, my wonderful viewers. And this works great. I just mixed it all in here and I use it whenever I need it. And I'm just going to sprinkle this onto the wet Mod Podge and that sticks really nice. And then I'm doing the little bulb there on the top, the little tip of the, the candle. I like to do that, it just mutes it a little bit. So now I, I had let it sit for maybe like five minutes to kind of dry a little bit. You don't have to wait, but it, sometimes it helps for when you put on this little seal coat. So this is Mod Podge, and I'm doing a dab motion to put it on if you were to brush it. It would brush the cinnamon right off, but you have to, instead you need to dab, and then you can, once you get it on there and get it wet and stuck, you can then brush it very gently to get the excess Mod Podge off. This is really easy to do. It's kind of, it's just relaxing, and the end result is so cool if you like primitive decor and primitive candles. The top I just set down, and then I'm just, again, dabbing the Mod Podge down in there. I try not to do too much because it will tend to puddle and pool in there a little bit just because it's a little little bowl type thing. But And now I'm just going to set that aside to dry, and once it dries, it'll be all ready to use. I don't do the bottom because it has an on-off switch down there, and it just makes it hard to change the battery and turn it on and off. So I just do the parts that you can see. So now I'm going to do my little rooster as well to kind of make it all look like it goes together. So I just hit a few spots on him and uh, then I'm going to, with the Mod Podge, and then I'm going to just put my spice mix on there and let him 
dry for a few minutes and then I go back in and do the same thing. Just kind of pounce and get the, just seal up those spices so that they don't fall off. Now you could do like a clear sealer or I think people have used hairspray. Uh, if you don't want to use the Mod Podge seal coat, you could do that as well. Now once he's dry, I'm just going to take some E6000 and some hot glue and I'm going to put that on the bottom so that I can attach him to the top of my little knob uh, that's on my cloche. So it never fails whenever I use glue on anything. It tends to seep out of the bottom around the edges. So even though I cleaned it up, it's still I can still see it there and it kind of bugs me. And I also feel like this little cloche is missing something. It needs a little bit of homespun material. So I'm just going to make a little bow from this black and tan material. And that will just bring some different color to it and some more interest. And then this piece is done. I picked up these cute little owls from the my local dump. We have a little free section, a uh, couple little tables that we can pick things up off from. And I saw these and I thought they were so cute. So I'm going to, because they're so shiny, I'm going to spray them with some matte clear to help the paint stick a little bit. Uh, it would It dulls it down so it's not so shiny and it gives the paint something to stick to. So I'm just going to do this green owl and not do the brown one and show you the difference. See how shiny that brown one is, that it, that's the way it came originally. And then this one is a lot duller and it, it definitely makes it more matte. So I, even if I didn't want to paint them, I could still do that if I wanted to get rid of the shininess. It works really well. Now that I showed you the difference in the two, I went ahead and sprayed the brown owl as well. And now I'm going to take some mineral paint, uh, sorry, Waverly paint in the color min mineral. And it is like a brownish gray color. And I'm going to do two coats on my owls with that. It covered really well. And I, I almost contemplated leaving the owls this color. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with them. I just knew that I didn't want to keep them the color that they were because their eyes were uh, painted and they were kind of weird. And I thought, well, if I painted over them and just distressed back what I wanted, I think that would work a lot better. I finally decided I wanted to uh, do a coat of white or ivory over the top of these owls. But I wanted to seal in the gray color so that when I distressed back, it would go back to the gray color and not the original color of the owls. So because it was raining, I couldn't go out and do my clear matte spray. So I just grabbed my Mod Podge and gave it a nice coat of that all over. And I set those aside to dry and I grabbed this diamond hard repurposed paint. I got this from Tractor Supply. It's an ivory color. And I thought I'd give it a try and see what uh, you know, if it was worth anything. I think it was around $25 for this uh, little can. I think it's a quart. And um, it did pretty well. I did two coats on this little owl. 
on both of them and it's probably could have gone for a third but because I was distressing back uh, I didn't mind um, having it show through just a little you could see a little bit of the gray through it but again I was going to distress it anyways and then I'm also going to use some of my dark stain on it so I didn't think it really mattered that I had a really good full coat on it but if you wanted to do a full coat and doing it over a dark paint I think three coats would have been better so I needed to make up some of my black stain or my dark stain that I use so I'm going to show you how I do it I take eight ounces of my antique wax that I have it's from Waverly or you can take the bigger jar whatever you want to do and then I take eight ounces of water. So if you were to use like the 12 ounce jar, you just use 12 ounces of water. And I put that right into my Waverly jar and I shake it up, make sure, you know, just getting as much of the Waverly antique wax as possible into my jar. So this is just a pickle jar that I'm pouring it into. It just makes it easier to store it. Now I'm taking my Waverly black paint and I was doing only one spoonful, but I was finding that I didn't like the stain. I thought it wasn't quite dark enough. So now I'm going to do two spoonfuls, probably they're tablespoons if you were to measure them out. And I stir those up really good. And anytime I use it, I make sure that I stir it up really, really well because the black paint does tend to separate and fall to the bottom. So you just stir it and it mixes in really well. So now I'm going to go in and sand my little owl down he's got little bumps where his like feathers would be and his little ears and his eyes so I just sanded him down it took me quite a while because that paint really stuck on there good and um, but I got it to where I liked it and now I'm going to stir up my dark stain and I'm going to put that on my little owl and we'll see how he comes out Okay, now that my little owls are painted and dark waxed or dark stained, I am going to put them on some old springs that I have. These are from a car seat that I found here on the property and we took our tractor and drug them right out of the dirt and I cleaned them up and took them apart and I'm, I've been using them on occasion and I thought these owls would look really cute sitting on top of them. So now it just takes time to figure out how they'll balance and make sure that they'll stay sitting and not fall over because they are, the owls are kind of heavy. They are a ceramic. So uh, once I figure out how I want them on there, and I think I finally got it. It took quite a while. I cut it so that you didn't have to sit through that whole thing. But uh, I have these little pitberry rings, the little candle rings, and I cut them with a wire cutter the inside ring so that I could fit them around my chubby little owls here and um, it just took some time to work it around and get it where I wanted it and um, just pull it around and then I'm going to lay them down and glue them so that they'll stay on once I get them where I think I want them and then I just fluff and and uh, move stuff around here and there so that uh, it just looks, they look kind of cohesive. They look about the same and they're spread out and I don't know, make sure it looks good. So I just took some hot glue and I'm gluing the owl to the little wire spring. And so I just put a little bit on and then I just kind of hold it and I add the glue where it touches, where they touch each other. And then I add some more once I get that set and I just held it on there for a long time to make sure that it would stay. I added a lot of glue so that it would stay in the little spring. Then once I got it so it would sit, I added some glue up underneath the pitberry ring that I had glued down to the spring and the owl 
and I just put that up underneath. I think the Spanish moss looks really nice uh, up underneath there. It just makes it look more full, almost like it's sitting on a little nest with pit berries. It's very cute. Once the glue was dry and all the Spanish moss was in up underneath, I stood it up and gave it a little haircut and fluffed the pit berry some more. And that one is done. I went along and did the other one. And now I have these two wooden tags. I took some dark stain and put it on there and then quickly wiped it off and it kind of stayed in certain spots and came off on others. And I like how it's just kind of um, it varies in the colors. So I'm just going to take a dark uh, marker and write hoot on the edge. And then I made a couple of little bows to go with them. And I thought I'd put those right on the tags and it would dress it up really cute. <laughs> So I wanted to share the exciting news of the new building at my transfer station. I always call it the dump, but it's actually a transfer station. Okay, you guys wanted to see what our free shack looked like. So this is brand spanking new. It came in Friday. This is Sunday. I just came in and I saw this building and I'm like, what? This is great. Brand new building. Got a garage door, free stuff, all new tables, free stuff all along and down the middle. I already have grabbed a bunch of things. I'm trying not to go too crazy. Save some for other people, but there's a ton of stuff. It used to go over there. You can see there's a few things over there that are probably waiting to go in. But that's where we used to go and pick it up. And now it's all inside this really cool building with a roof. He just told me they're gonna try to keep it open for the winter time. It's got windows. It smells so good in here, fresh wood. But this is awesome. I'm so excited about this. They're gonna put a dumpster out back for trash. So he said we can police it how we want. But I mean, look at the stuff that's in here. There's a little purses, beaded purses, probably worth something, I don't really know. Stuff in that one, I think. Oh, it's the, the shoulder thing. Movies, pictures, beautiful pictures. Dogs, this is like a folk arty one. That's really pretty. There's some stuff in there. There's some pit berries. Really nice Christmassy stuff. Paddles. I mean, this building is gorgeous. I'm so glad they did this. I should grab that and redo it. Put legs on it paint it up but somebody left boxes from the post office those would be great this is really pretty a little country sign lots of cool stuff brand new stuff still in the package these are um, battery lights I already picked up a couple boxes or one box I guess 
so I don't want to go too crazy. I don't know what this one is. But I'm going to show you everything I picked up. Wireless indoor helicopter. See, hasn't even been opened. Put that on your Christmas list for somebody. Look at this thing. It's like a lighter or something. So cool. I'm so excited. Okay, so here's my haul from the dump today. I got all kinds of great brand new stuff. It's amazing. First of all, big haul, got some bricks. I love to pick up whole bricks that I can find. There's a little section of like construction, like old toilets and cement that's been broke up, bricks, things like that. I like to put them along my flower beds so I'm trying to build those up. So I've got here and then all along here. You can't see them because all my daylilies are like going over them. But I've got it all along the front of my deck. So, and this is all outlined. Oh yeah, we've got to have rooster crowing. So I like to pick them up just in case. But um, I found some in the free shack. That beautiful brand new free shack that we got. He said the building was $10,000 and um, they bought new tables and they just said for us to just kind of police them ourselves and there will be a few volunteers when they come in they'll throw stuff away that just you know if it's junk or whatever but and he said feel free if you see anything to throw it that looks like it's broken or it's not you know not anything good so I got these two pit berry rings, little candle pit berry rings. If you watch my channel, you know I use these a lot. So I got two of them. They got the rusty stars. Those are worth a lot, just the rusty stars. I got this really cute little tray. It's beautiful, actually. And it's got uh, this really pretty, um, this is raised decoration on the top. But I thought this was beautiful. And I may just leave it just the way it is. Just clean it up. It needs a good cleaning. Try to put it in my booth. Anytime I can find things with feet that I can raise my stuff up on. Or it would be great on a bureau or in a bathroom to put your jewelry. Or you could even use this to put your soap and soap dispenser and whatever. Lotion or whatever. That may have been what it was. Or you could stand it up like this. That would be pretty cool. Uh, I got these berries. They're not really pit berries. They're just berries. But we're getting into the winter holiday season where these are going to be great for this little wreath for to put around candles, uh, to put on a sign as an O for home, or um, I don't know, just to decorate. So that was a great find. I got a really cool, this is a wire, this is an actual wire basket. I grabbed this because it was in it, but I use this for packing material, so I just figured I'd leave it in there because I can use it to pack my stuff from Etsy on it, so it's free, so. And this is, seems like it's, I don't know, I don't think it's ever been used. It's like brand new. Now, if that shack wasn't there, shed, I should say, I don't, shouldn't call it a shack because it's beautiful, but if that wasn't there, all this stuff would sit out in the rain and then eventually get thrown away if nobody picked it up. Can you imagine that getting thrown away? Like, it's just a, such a waste. Okay, so real quick, this is for my granddaughter, Duck and Goose. It's like a hardcover book. She's five. She's starting to learn her words and letters and writing and stuff like that. So it's pretty easy read, so I thought this would be great for her. I'm always picking stuff up that she may be interested in. So just a little book. They had a little pile there. Um, this is called Temptations. See if I can get it so you can read. Temptations right there. There's a plastic lid. And then underneath, this is a, a lid as well. This is just the box. But this is the lid as well. So if you wanted to bake with it. Um, or it can be a serving tray. It's got the holder here. This was all in this box. And I don't know. I think it's brand new. It's got a card inside. 
I don't know as it's ever been used, guys. I did find some stuff a few weeks ago that was Temptations, probably from the same person. That stuff had been used. It had some little chips on the inside. But um, it's just a really beautiful design on it for Christmas. So I just love that. I picked it up because it's. I may keep it for a while for myself, but I don't know. But uh, yeah, I did find some la uh, a few weeks ago. That was like an everyday. It was white and red. If I can find a picture of it, I'll pop it in here somewhere. But I found two, uh, ba and they're baking dishes. So you can bake up with them. I think microwave with them. I don't know. Let's see if this card says anything. Oh, they're, um, they're recipes. So spicy sweet potatoes. There we go. I'll leave that. Take a screenshot if you want to know how to do spicy sweet potatoes. And then this is decadent chocolate tart. There we go. Take a screenshot if you want to make that. So that's what those are. I was going to show you the bottom. This is what it looks like. Made for Temptation LLC. Oven dishwasher micro -sa microwave safe and presentable ovenware. Yeah, it's beautiful. Handmade. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yeah. Tried to get out of the sun a little bit. But it's definitely ceramic, heavy stuff. And then you got this lid if you want to just pop it in the fridge. It's great. Great little cookware. Very cool. All right. The other thing I got was this pack of um, candles. It comes with the directions. It says multifunctional flameless candles. Now they were all wrapped in this white paper like they had never been opened. And they still have the plastic around them. They still have the tag for the battery still on there. The only thing that's missing, and I haven't tried to take it out to see if it might be in there somewhere, is the remote. It's supposed to be a remote there to turn them on and off, but you can always just click this on and off. Let's see. Let's pull it out. Pull little tabs out. Oh yeah. Oh, they're like LED. Can you see a little light in there? I'll turn it off. There we go. Oh, very cool. Okay. So they can turn on and off. If you had the remote, they probably would be timer. But I don't see, unless it's underneath the styrofoam thing. Um, but yeah, they came all, all boxed up, styrofoamed in this pretty box. Came in this box here, Jeffrey Banks. I don't, never heard of it, but could be some big famous candle maker. I don't know. But yeah, that's what I found at my dump this week. So all this would have gone in the trash if somebody had not picked it up. Um, oh, actually, nope, we're not done. I've got these, doesn't really say what they are, but I think they're magnets, I'm not really sure. They feel very heavy, but this one's for autumn. And this one looks like a winter Christmassy scenes. I don't know if they're mag, they feel like magnets because they're kind of heavy weighted. Let me open one and see. Okay, one of them was open on the top. So I was able to take most of them out. That's a really cute little snowman. There's a little dog in there, a little big snowflake. And then there's this let it snow with some snowflakes. Cute little red squirrel and a little blue jay. Kind of wintry, wintry theme. So that's very cool. And it does have the black um, backing on it, like it's a magnet, but it won't stick to my truck. So I'll have to see if it will stick like to the fridge or something. But I was thinking more gluing the back of them and making some kind of a scene with them. You know, like some kind of a sign or something like that. Um, I really love this snowman. I'm a big snowman fan. So I've got some stuff in behind it too. So there's even more to it. I just didn't take them all out, but um, very cool. Get a little cardinal. And then this other one is autumn. And that one's, oh no, that one is open too. But it looks like it's got a wreath. Yeah, it says autumn. And it's got this really pretty wreath with sunflowers and pumpkins and all that. Um, oh, and then leaves, all kinds of leaves. 
So autumn greetings. Leaves, leaves, leaves. So if they stick on my fridge, my granddaughter will love it because she'll want to decorate for the holidays, the different seasons, maybe not really the holidays. Um, and then some of them I could probably use for like a sign or, a, or something. And then if I don't, I'll just package them back up somehow in like a Ziploc or something. And I'll take them back over. Because there's nothing wrong with them. They're like brand new. So, so that is my haul, guys. That's what I got from the dump today. And there was so much more. But I didn't dare to like come out there with arm loads. Because, you know, you don't want to push your luck. <laughs> so anyway, got my bricks in the back there. I'm going to be putting those out. And then all of this stuff. So excited. So stick around, you'll see what we do with these. I hope you enjoyed my projects today and my little tour of my transfer station and my haul that I got from there. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.